Hello, this is uh, Pablo Acosta from Prescient. I want to talk about five nodes that I think will help you as you develop complex flows in Prescient Designer or Node Red. <clears throat> First scenario, um, you have nodes like this in QTT in node that have a status indicator, which is very handy to, well, precisely see what the status of the node is. In this case, um, it'll tell you that the uh, this MQTT node is connected to the broker. So this is very helpful, but as flows uh, grow larger, uh, you obviously want to use hierarchy to get a handle on that complexity and be able to, to deal with it. But the problem, as you know, and we can go to this hierarchy subflow where I have a similar MQTT node, as you know, uh, once you put a node that has a status indicator in a subflow, you can no longer see that um, indicator. So one way to deal with it is to use the status node. That's the first node that I want to highlight. So the status node essentially generates a message every time a node that it is watching changes status. And you have the option of essentially watching all the nodes or watching selected nodes. In this case, uh, I'm just observing the comms subflow MQTT in node. And uh, so when I deploy this flow, uh, the this node went to the connected state, and you can see here in the in the uh, debug sidebar what the uh, message that the status node generates uh, looks like. Um, it's essentially what uh, you would pass uh, to um, the node dot status API. So it's a fill property, a shape property a text, and it also tells you what, um, essentially what node changed state, what node produced this, this status, which is, um, it's handy sometimes. So this is uh, great. So one thing that you can do with this is uh, use the status to trigger something, the status change to tr trigger something, for, and, and to continue with the MQTT node, for example, uh, you may want to wait till the node is connected uh, the MQTT node is connected to start sending the messages, for example. So you can just uh, use this uh, message, which, by the way, it's in the by default, it's in the uh, message dot status uh, property. Uh, you can use this method to you know wait for say a field of green, and then you you would start sending messages. But what what about the um, the visual aspect of the uh, of the status indicator, and here I'll use the uh, uh, I'll give a hat tip to uh, Kurt Brown from Wag, who's uh, who taught me this. You can actually use, and this will be the, the second node that uh, I want to highlight. In this case, it's the function node, the old uh, tried and true uh, function node, but using the status indicator of itself to essentially be a proxy for for the node uh, status indicator within a subflow. So in this case, um, what I have is a very simple line. It says, if there is a message status, uh, message.status, then just make that the status of this node. And for, um, just for as aesthetics, I since this is just a status node, I, I deleted uh, any output. Uh, so, Essentially, now we have at the top level, we have a status indicator, visual status indicator of what the MQD node inside the subflow is. And of course, you can have many of these uh, or as many as um, nodes you want to sort of keep track of uh, its status in a visual way at the top level. So that is the second um, node that I want to highlight. The third one is. Um, what I guess is now it's called the filter node, it used to be called the RBE node. Uh, and RBE stands by uh, to, sorry, stands for uh, report by exception. Now, what you will happen, you will see in these, um, using this status node is that um, some uh, 
uh, nodes have very, uh, for lack of, word, lack of a better word, chatty um, status. Like it, they they update the status a lot, and and so if if you just use the raw output of the status indicator, you'll have a lot of messages, uh, and all of them, for example, say messages green connected, green connected, green connected. Not the case in the MQTT node, but others. Um, essentially, just every time they, they check status, the way the nodes are um, coded, they just send the status. So for that, it's very very uh, helpful to use this report by exception node, which has many uses, but this is one one use that I think it's, it's easy to see the value of. Um, and the mode I'm using it, uh, you can see it has many modes so you can use it. But in this case, the most common, I would think, uh, use is to block and list value changes, which means it's gonna filter out, i.e. not send to the output any message that is the same as the last one it had. So in this case, if this if we keep sending the same status, say fill green shape dot text connected. If we keep sending it, only the first time that we send it, it's going to change. Otherwise, it's going to it's going to propagate through the output. Otherwise, it's not. Um, and you can see uh, here, I have a, like a simple example. I have um, a connected injector and disconnected injector, meaning this is going to send a uh, a connected status, and this is going to send a disconnected status. So. The last message that the RBE uh, node saw is um, a connected status. So if I send connected messages, nothing's gonna, show. I guess I, just to be fair, I have to turn on this uh, debug node. So if I keep sending connected status, nothing is gonna go through the RBE because it's the same node and the same message uh, as it saw before. But if I send a disconnected, boom, it's gonna appear now. And you can see it's um, disconnected, right? If I keep sending disconnected, it is not gonna do anything. And again, if it changes, then it, it shows up. So that's a, it's, it's a very uh, helpful note to uh, minimize the data through, um, through certain connections, uh, which is particularly uh, helpful is uh, if in as impression designer, if this subflow is uh, deployed to an edge device and the edge device is connected via cellular connection, you probably want to minimize the amount of data you send. And there's no point in sending the same message over and over again, just report by exception, meaning just only send when something changes. So that's the third um, note I want to uh, highlight. The uh, fourth one is, again, in the case of present designer where this um, subflow is deployed to a device, what happens if there are errors, errors in the device? You, you're not going to see them. I mean, if, you, if you're if uh, you running something in, in the cloud portion of present designer or in Node-RED, you see it. And they say, uh, if this function generates an error, then you'll see it in, in, the, uh, in the debug sidebar. But if it's running remotely, well, it's going to be in the remote node, right? Not in 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 uh, in designer here in the cloud portion. So for that, um, use a catcher. So most of my flows have a status indicator. When there's any um, node that has a, uh, a status indicator and a a catch node. In this case, again, kind of like the um, the status node, you can either monitor all nodes, or you can monitor a selected number of nodes. Uh, so in this case, I'm just monitoring this uh, function, which is general error, which uh, it's kind of silly. I, I'm, I'm gonna, it will generate an error. Uh, when I send a message, it's gonna send a message as a string and this JSON dot parse is gonna, it's gonna generate an error. But uh, what you will see is that uh, when I send the error, uh, it's gonna, the, the catch is gonna generate an error. And then when I turn this on, you will see it in the sidebar, just like if we were running locally. And similarly to the uh, 
the status node, it'll tell you which node is generating the error. So this is a very uh, convenient way of making sure that you're not missing any errors in a, in a remote flow in Prism Designer. And uh, the last node I'm gonna highlight, it's, uh, I'm just gonna toot my own horn, is the prompt in input node. A lot of times uh, when developing large flows, debugging them, kind of in the process of developing them or testing them, you want to inject uh, a bunch of inputs and do that quickly, um, different, test different scenarios. And you don't want to start changing an inject node and deploying. So the uh, prompt input node is very simple. You essentially just uses the browser prompt to enter values, uh, and you can select what that uh, dialog window is going to is going to um, say uh, the output of what you input, where it's going to go, and which property message property in this case measure the payload. And you can also do some uh, data type conversion directly. In this case, I'm just going to uh, choose to remain as a string, and just to be kind of silly, ask I'm going to ask. It, and for a name, and then I'm going to say your name is and whatever the input was, and send it to the debug output. So when you click this button, uh, the browser prompt is going to appear. Here's the programmable prompt. What is your name? It's John. And then it's going to send it <clears throat> through the function node, and it prints your name is John. Very simple example, but just to highlight that you can, you know, you can click again. I haven't deployed. I haven't touched anything. Can I say, my name is uh, Pablo, and off it goes. So it, very quickly, you can test all sorts of inputs, all sorts of cases without deploying, which speeds up uh, the development process. So those are the five nodes, the status node, the function node as a proxy for a, um, a status node, then uh, sorry, for the status of a, a indicator of a node, then the um, the RBE node or the report by exception or filter node. The fourth one is the catch node, and the fifth one is the uh, prompt input node. Thank you.